as we barrel towards the end of 2021, let's be honest, this year has been... Yeah, quite one of those years. But as is always the case when you say goodbye to the old year and welcome in the new one, it's always healthy to sit down and think about the things that have happened, both good and bad. And today, myself and the rest of the Transport Evolved family are going to share with you some of our thoughts over the last 12 months. Our highlights, our low points, and our hopes and fears for next year. Obviously, for me, the highlight of 2021 in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation has to be Transport Evolved hiring me. I think, honestly, one of my personal highlights of this year was getting to drive down to San Diego to ride in an Aptera for the very first time. I've been following Aptera since I was much, much younger, well over a decade. And it's really good to see this company that had disappeared into the history books get resurrected. And thanks to modern battery technology, modern in-wheel motor technology, and modern construction techniques actually get a chance of entering into production. I don't know if Aptera is actually going to be made and sold, but it's really nice seeing that company get reborn and reimagined for a next generation of EVs. And as some of you may know, I do have a reservation in, and I'm Fingers crossed that maybe I'll get to drive a production one next year. So one of my highlights for this year has to have been the road trip we did last month. Now, it hasn't been released yet, but I will let you guys know this. It was amazing because we got to drive two fantastic cars. And I think it was the most at ease I have ever felt on one of those trips. They were comfortable. They were quick. Now... I have, up until that point, never been in a car that was especially fast, especially one like the, um, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll let you guys in on a little secret. It's the Mach-E. Ooh. I've never been in a car that fast. It was crazy. And it was, it was exhilarating. Another amazing highlight that I just cannot ignore this year are the amazing people who joined the team. 2020 was a really scary year for us. We had to get rid of our studio. We had to cut back on our spending as COVID really started to bite. And 2021 was the year in which we were able to really reinvest that money into the Transport Evolved family. Kate Walden Elliott, who had been helping out here and there, became an actual paid member of staff this year. She joined Transport Evolved as an hourly employee and we were able to make sure that Erin was fully signed on and fully full time, which she wasn't up until the start of this year. We were also able to welcome Winter onto the team. He joined us as a, a social media person, but quickly was found in front of a camera. And as I'm sure you will agree, is a pretty darned good presenter. And of course, this year, we also welcomed some other part-timers who are no longer with us, the wonderful Kit and Morgan, both of whom have left an amazing impact on the Transport Evolved family. But last and not least, the wonderful Michael, who joined Transport Evolved just at the tail end of the year, and I think is already making his presence felt in really tight edits and far better storytelling than I could ever imagine at an edit deck. So I think my highest high from 2021 has definitely been starting to convert my Morris Minor, Rebecca. I've had that car since I was about 13 and I love it a ridiculous amount for a car. My wife accepts that there are two women in the marriage. There's her and my car. And I have wanted to convert her for such a long time. I tried to start back in England and just didn't have the money. I still don't really have the money, but the DIY conversions op options have got so much better. And getting my fingers dirty, getting to play with Rebecca and start that conversion process has been awesome. And yes, I know it's going painfully slowly. That's the way it's going to be. I think that the overall experience of working for Transport Evolved is a dream come true. Um, I've worked in a completely different industry for the past uh, 
10 years or so. And what I get to do here is a hobby of mine that I was extremely passionate about, that I had invested several thousands of dollars into doing. And so being able to do that on a professional front has been extremely enlightening. It's been a wonderful learning experience. Um, it has been fun. It has been challenging. It has been extremely challenging, but in all of the right ways. I think the most important story of 2021 has to be the LG Energy battery recall because it was frankly just so big. You have the Bolt EV, you have the Kona EV, you have a lot of news stories about electric vehicles catching fire, and that's really scary. And at a time when electric vehicle uptake is, is a steady growing curve, to have really not good news about some of the most accessible, and in some ways, especially with the Kona EV, exciting EVs when they came out, to have them all being recalled, this whole process that's costing a huge amount of money, and it really was a black eye to electric vehicles. So that's not really a highlight in a positive sense, but I think it was the most important story, at least in America, in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation. What has been the highlight news story in the EV world this year for me? I think that's a two-part answer. The first part would be the Rivian and seeing its capabilities off-road. I think that having an off-road capable vehicle that is emissions-free and that is quiet, I think works very well for that setting. The second vehicle that I like for a very selfish reason would probably be the Porsche Taycan. And I'm the kind of person that, I, I hate boring cars. I hate, I just do, I hate boring cars. The Porsche has shown me that you can have a very sports-oriented ride in an EV platform. And I found that extremely exciting to see that and to see what cars will be available in future that will have that kind of capabilities. There have been a lot of car launches and events this year that I could pick as my highlight, but I think something that probably doesn't get a whole lot of attention and I feel should is the amazing work that's being done in the grassroots world, both in terms of activism, but also in terms of open source development. We've seen real incredible growth this year in open source EV conversions powered by electric vehicle components from vehicles like the BMW i3 that have been reverse engineered and have made it possible for the first time really for people to start building their own EVs using off the shelf components that have been reverse engineered for use in conversions. Another thing that's really got me excited this year are companies like Opibus in Africa who are really working to electrify communities that might not have otherwise had access to electric vehicles yet. And that really excites me. I don't know if I've ever shared this, but if I ever got to the point where this channel kind of took off and we made a lot of money and we were all incredibly wealthy, I think that I would like to see the channel to continue and I'd love to be involved with it. But I think I would also like to spend more time working on on charity projects that help encourage people to gain the skills they need to have a, a future employment in the EV industry, repairing vehicles, helping people convert vehicles, and also setting up a charity to help people who could otherwise not afford to go electric to go electric. And I think that is something I'd like to see more of next year. Now, I think one of my news highlights for this year has to have been the Build Back Better bill. Now I know it has had a number of roadblocks and a few things taken out of it, but I think it shows that there is a growing vested interest in improving the infrastructure in this country, which is in serious need of some updating. Now, if you're in, you know, the Oregon area, in the Washington area, you probably know that a number of our, number of our bridges are, um, pretty old. <laughs> like, uh, some of them are over 100 years old and need a little help. So, you know, though it doesn't really have much to do with cars, it is directly related to transportation. And I'm really hoping that next year we're actually able to push forward with it and really see some more momentum on that because I am 
really excited to see some more actual like interest in in keeping our roads um our roads our bridges uh up to date safe and hopefully you know smoother I think my highest high outside of my personal life has been seeing things like the Vinfast and the Vega, cars coming from countries that don't commonly produce really high-end vehicles, cars that are different and really intended for their own markets, and cars that really leverage that lower barrier for entry to EVs. The technology is so much easier for people to use that the opportunity for new car makers to spring up is really exciting. My lowest low? That's, well, there's kind of two. One is definitely the Bolt GM fires battery debacle. The way that GM have handled that has been atrocious. The batteries catching fire, that was a problem and it could have been resolved. But the way that GM chose to handle that has really left a lot of people very upset and rightly so. I think the other thing that I find disappointing is actually kind of a high and a low simultaneously. It's seeing those cars that have come from China, the small, cheap EVs, the ones that just are really ideally suited to city living. And the fact that they're not coming to the US, I find so deeply frustrating. I really wish that the US had a process for people to import a single vehicle for themselves to use so that you can make that decision yourself. I think for me personally, it's been really discovering through my work at Transport Evolved just how tribal the EV world can be in a way that feels very unhealthy, both personally as someone who interacts with that world a great deal, and in terms of advancing the uptake of electric vehicles. Uh, there are a significant, I think very much minority, but very vocal minority of people who don't really care about electric vehicles succeeding. They care about their favorite electric vehicles succeeding and the ones that they don't like failing. And I know that people are gonna assume that I'm just uh, poking at Tesla fanboys, and to some extent I am, but very much not exclusively. There's a definite vocal cadre of people who desperately want Tesla to fail. There's a cadre of Tesla fans who want every other EV to fail. And there are a quite vocal percentage of people who comment on our videos, which seems very weird to me because it implies they're watching our videos, who just want electric vehicles to fail and believe really, really strongly that the future is internal combustion. And that, I feel sometimes like people are coming from such different and entrenched places. I don't know how to get past these entrenched positions so that we can all work together as we try to move toward a cleaner and greener world. And transportation is going to be part of that. I think my biggest frustration in the EV community this year has been my experience in trying to adopt the EV lifestyle. New cars were extremely expensive and in the end I had to go with a used model. And even after that, I didn't have any way of charging it at home, which is why I went with a plug-in electric hybrid. One of my biggest frustrations of this year has been the lack of mainstream automakers to understand how electric vehicle charging works. A lot of the time, car companies are bringing new models to market and they're not really engaging and embracing the conversation that we need to have about electric vehicle charging, and they're kind of leaving it to everybody else to clean up the pieces, whether it's not fully supporting a charging network or dealerships not properly explaining how EV charging works. I've heard so many horror stories in the last 12 months, and it feels that if we really are gonna make the transition to electric vehicles in the future, which I think we need to do, we need to really demystify the process of charging. It is not rocket science, and yet, Everybody seems to be making it rocket science with mumbo jumbo technical terms and a level of elitism that I don't think serves to help anybody. A growing frustration that I've had with this past year has to be the growing tribalism and contention in the EV community with whose answer is the best answer. And what I mean by that is just the uh, conflict with different um, groups of people who think that their solution is the best, therefore other people's solutions are inferior or bad. 
And I think something that's really important going into New Year, going into, you know, our hopefully our electrified future, um, is that it's not just one company's job to fix the problems we have, to fix basically the world. Um, it's a group effort. And I think uh, going into hopes for New Year, um, I really hope that we are able to unite on that front. I'm hoping that more people that want to adopt EVs don't have to say, well, this person said this is right, so this has to be the only option. I'm hoping that everyone is able to find something that is right for them, no matter what company it is, and that they are able to make that purchase and that they are able to move forward with electrifying their future, electrifying their home, because any movement towards that goal is going to get us somewhere better. When I think about my hopes for 2022 in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation, I really have two, and it's very regional. In America, I think that we're gonna really start to see the rollout of electric pickup trucks advancing. I don't think they're gonna hit their stride in 2022, but I think culturally, we're gonna really start to see a shift in 2022 that's gonna be a big deal. Because right now, for better or worse, largely worse, electric vehicles are associated with a segment of the population that's not necessarily who you think of when you think of pickup trucks. And I think that what we're gonna see as more and more EV pickup trucks come online is not just cleaner, greener vehicles that appeal to someone looking from an environmental standpoint, but vehicles that are cheaper to operate and offer feature sets that you can't get in internal combustion vehicles and that that's gonna be a big deal. Outside the US for the upcoming year, I think what I'm really hoping to see is accessible electric vehicles, mostly coming out of places like China, although I'm very interested to see what happens with companies out of Vietnam as well, making electric vehicles a lot more accessible. And I think they're gonna be good. Uh, I think vehicles like the Aura Cat, for instance, maybe what VinFast is bringing to the table. We're gonna start to see more and more of these more accessible vehicles spreading outside of their home markets to places like Europe. And I, I'm really hopeful that that will radically increase uptake of electric vehicles while providing good, accessible, functional and pleasant to use cars. What I'm really looking forward to for next year is the amazing slew of new vehicles that are promised to come to market, both with next generation 800 volt charging technology and 400 volt charging technology. As many of you know, I am a Ford Mustang Mark E reservation holder, or rather my wife Kate is, and we're going to be picking that car up at the very start of 2022. But I'm also an F-150 Lightning reservation holder. We didn't opt to go for two Fords for any reason other than they were the vehicles that seemed to suit our needs at that given point. And I'm really excited about having an all electric pickup truck. Uh, many of you won't know, but I love pickup trucks. I've wanted an electric pickup truck for a really long time. And I think it's gonna really help the team. It's gonna help us get stuff to places. And with all of the snow that's in the forecast for the holidays, I think it would also be useful just helping me get back to my house in the mountains without worrying about getting stuck. What I'm looking forward to most next year is all the vehicles that Transport Evolved has lined up to film and edit. I'm still in a probationary period, so I'm hopeful that I'm still here when those vehicles come to our driveway. But I'm really excited to be able to film them and to be able to edit them and have a bit of creative say in the outward content. And I'm very hopeful that the viewers will love it too. I think one of my hopes for 2022 is to get Rebecca completed. That is a personal wish. I don't really see it happening unless batteries miraculously become much cheaper. Uh, I think my hope for the industry for 2022 is that they actually finally start producing some affordable EVs for the mass transition that we need. I would love to also see the investment that is needed in public transportation infrastructure in the US that is woefully lacking and such an important part of a just transition. And that's it for today and for 2021. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel 
and to our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two. And make sure you give the bell a gentle tickle to make sure that you're told when our next video goes live next year. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew. Go to anybody and everybody who has supported Transport Evolved this year. We have more than one thousand Patreon supporters, which as I understand it is more than average. And I don't care if you donate one dollar a month or fifty dollars a month, you've all played a part in helping us get to where we are today, to expand our crew, to expand our production values, and to carry on covering the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. They are Jason Bodo, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, David Janakula, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Joseph Broucher, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Regine Vallows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Anthony Coates, Carl Hodgson, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude goes to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Christopher Lee Jones, Paul Conway, Ellery Hannersley, and Ian. If you are feeling left out, don't forget that you can join Patreon at the link below, or you can show us your support through Bitcoin, Ko-fi, or Armour Swag Store. And that really is it for the rest of this year. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, engaging, even if the comment hasn't been particularly positive. Without you, we wouldn't be here doing what we're doing today. So on behalf of myself and the rest of the TE crew, who've gone from just three of us to six of us in one year, I wish you a very, very peaceful, and prosperous new year. Keep evolving. <sighs> just two hours in the car to get here. Not a problem. Yes. I'll just drop by. It's fine. Yes, boss. My big hope for 2022 is outside the United States. My big hope for 2022. Did I just do it again? I think my highest high from 2020... Just get along, everyone. Just hold hands. Plucks. I was doing so well. And then I lost my plot. I think I can speak with my mouth. And words will come out, and they might make sense. Also notice this, and a number of the staff of us all... <laughs> Bleh. That was really exciting to me. I'm going to do that again. What are your interests? Huh. Moonlight walks on the beach, listening to the sultry sounds of the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know that's going in the outro. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have hopes for next year? That's the other thing. Oh. <laughs> no. No, I don't. <clears throat> um. <laughs> All hope has been beaten out of me by 2020 and 2021. 2021, huh, guys? That was a kind of a weird year.